refuse a crisis. And so there are forms of denial, okay? Evasion of responsibility is another one. Reducing the offensiveness of the occurrence is the third one. Corrective action and mortification. And we'll talk about them in just a little bit of detail in the next couple slides. As I said with denial, there's more than one strategy here. You can actually deny that, you know, something that you did it or that you're culpable, or as in our cases, you can shift the blame elsewhere. And uh, this one I put, you know, Clinton's quote, you know, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. That he outright, in the beginning, he outright denied. Evasion of responsibility, here you're trying to reduce the level of culpability that you have in that crisis by claiming that it was provoked by another set of circumstances, something out of your control, it couldn't have been prevented. Uh, we made a mistake, but we had good intentions, and so that's another strategy. I noted here uh, the Red Cross CEO coming under fire after 9-11, mm -hmm. after they couldn't account for where you know, a lot of the donations were being filtered to and how much money had actually come in. Reducing the level of offensiveness is the next one. And so here, we're encouraging the public to look at the bigger picture, right? Look at a more complete picture of what has happened. You, you don't see everything, perhaps in the media coverage or the interviews or the newspaper. Everything is not out there. So let me paint a bigger picture. And in that painting, they will emphasize the good things that they have done, you see. Uh, here, I noted, because I used uh, Clinton's statement, I don't know if you remember, after the Lewinsky scandal, Hillary Clinton said on television in an interview that, you know, the bigger issue here, right, it shouldn't be focused on whether this did or didn't happen. This is an attack on my husband. And the bottom line is it's a Republican conspiracy against Bill Clinton. That's how she framed it, you see. So she was using that reducing offensiveness strategy. Corrective action is the next one, and so here you're actually taking specific steps to repair what has happened and preventing future occurrences. So, for example, here I put the government intervention after Katrina. We can even point to physical things that were done after Hurricane Katrina to bring restoration to that area. And then Tylenol. You know, I don't know if we even sometimes recall, I tell my students, after the Tylenol scandal, you know, they came up with a oil seal over the medication that really revolutionized the way that we buy our medication. That was, for them, corrective action. Mortification, uh, I believe this is the final one. And so here, the, the rhetor, or that person who assumes that occurrence, is accepting responsibility for what has happened. They will issue a public apology. And I know here that, of course, eventually, uh, former President Bill Clinton had to issue an apology, and in that apology he said that he was sorry because he had an inappropriate relationship with this former White House intern, Monica Lewinsky. And then more recently, <coughs> we have seen the use of mortification with uh, former New York Governor Elliot Spitzer after he used a personal check to pay for uh, prostitution services. Now, in looking at our crisis, uh, I did BP, and Benita will come up in a few moments and uh, do Sakium. So I'm going to kind of, because I've already introduced the strategies, I'm going to tell you what I did, and then I'm going to pick one or two of them and talk in more detail. And if you have questions, we can do that towards the end so that I have time for Benita. The background on BP, I think a lot of us are familiar with. This happened last spring, and there was a, an explosion on this rig, the Deepwater Horizon. It was an offshore drilling rig. Uh, that was actually leased by BP, and they made that distinction, not owned by them. It sank uh, two days later, dumping an average of 5,000 barrels of oil uh, into the Gulf, and this was, you know, this daily, you know, dumping of oil, dumping of oil, pouring of oil into uh, the Gulf, and, and that whole region was affected by this crisis, caused a, the worst man-made environmental disaster in our history the worst man-made disaster. Some of us may or may not be familiar with Exxon Valdez and that oil spill uh, in Alaska. This one was even more damaging to the environment than the Exxon crisis. And so BP obviously launched a massive response effort that paled in relation to the devastation that the crisis had caused. <clears throat> in our analysis, uh, I identified several strategies 
that BP used and primarily focused on the CEO at that time, which was Tony Hayward. And if we're not familiar, we're talking about a UK company that is a global company, but the explosion took place here in the US. So you can imagine then the level of response and how that response had to be channeled as an international response. So they used mortification, shifting the blame, minimization, good intentions, compensation, of course, because of the claims, and corrective action. Okay, and I just point to the, the broad strategies that these fall under uh, in the noise typology. Okay, so several strategies were used, and I can't go through all of them, so I want to just kind of pick a couple of them. Um, here, mortification, and actually in the literature, mortification is often used as one of the final strategies. Right? Because here it's like we go through everything and then finally if we have to issue an apology or be mortified and say I am actually sorry, we save that for last. But in this case with BP, they used mortification first. And I want to make some distinctions there because Tony Hayward was very careful in his use of mortification. So he took an immediate stance of apologizing but only accepted some of the responsibility and instead chose to make a distinction. He said, we are responsible, not for the accident, right? Not for the accident, but we're responsible for the oil and for dealing with it and cleaning up the situation. So he set BP up as, we didn't cause the accident, but we have to clean it up, you see. And that was something that angered. It angered <laughs> President Obama, it angered the American public, there was just so much turmoil over him making that kind of a distinction. In front of Congress, he had to go before a congressional committee in June of last year. He said the explosion and the spill never should have happened. So I admit it never should have happened. And I'm deeply sorry that it did. Whatever the cause, BP will do what we can to make sure that an incident like this doesn't happen again. So making that distinction. He shifted the blame, and I do this one because if I'm saying that he made that distinction, here's the follow-up to that. He actually said we share the blame with these other two companies. One was TransOcean. They were in the media, uh, heavily in the media after this uh, crisis. They're a Switzerland company, and they actually own the rig. So he's saying that there were some safety measures that were not in place, that should have been in place, that contributed to the accident. And then Halliburton was another contractor that uh, was involved in the blame for uh, this explosion. And I just point out here that the three executives that had an off-site meeting, and in that meeting they just pointed fingers at each other in a similar way that Ford and Firestone did after the tire recall back in the 90s. Uh, I won't, yeah, I will do, I'll let this one be my last one because this one is, is just funny. I, you know, in our research, you know, especially with us having a, a background in public relations or strategic planning and working with organizational leaders, some comments that you hear people make in response to a crisis is just baffling. Uh, and so here, you know, I talk about some of these. One of the, the things that uh, Tony Hayward said, you know, after this incident, he talked about the level of damage and that it was modest if you think about the sea is so big, right? And so we have this oil, the, the amount of oil, the volume of oil that's pumping in pales in comparison to the volume of the water because we're talking about the sea. And really not focusing then on what people were focused on, which was the images of the damage that was caused. So, you know, it's like you have this, this picture that he's painting on the one end, and on the other end you have images of these oil-soaked animals washing up, you know, along the coast and, you know, just fighting for their survival or dead. And people, you know, having to clean the animals uh, and just the level of devastation. And so really not being sensitive to that level of devastation. He commented that he would be glad when this was all over because he just wanted his life back. And that was another misstep that he later apologized for and said that it never should have happened uh, because 11 crewmen lost their lives. So I'm sure that they would also want to get their lives back, you see. Uh, and so these comments really angered President Obama, and in a Today Show interview, he said, you know, if this was somebody that was working for me, I would have fired them. So I'm going to stop there. I had, you know, some others, compensation and corrective action.